the way we created Occupy Wall Street is that a social movement is created from a contagious mood and a new tactic. So with Occupy Wall Street, we spread a contagious mood that we got from the Arab Spring, and we combined it with the new tactics that were coming out of Egypt and Spain. So right now, we see also new tactics emerging in Europe, and that new tactic is social movements that win elections. We're seeing it in Spain with Podemos, in Italy with the Five Star Movement. They're now starting a, a multi-country one called Diem. This is the future of activism. The future of activism is social movements that are able to do complex behaviors like win elections, elect representatives from themselves, m decide on what the legislation is going to be, govern the cities once they get into power. Instead of putting our hopes into isolated um, individuals, it's instead this, this amazing kind of horizontal concept of, no, we're a social movement, we're a protest movement, we're going to use street protests to get into power, to win elections, to swing elections. Your unified theory um, of protest has four pillars, right. and one of them uh, is sort of the divine, sort of the road to Damascus kind of style of intervention, yeah. which brings you a long way from one of your early activisms of forming an atheist club at your high school. Right. Um, why is that an important element? It's actually something that it's a bit of activism on your part because most of the theories of of revolution have rejected that that particular element and you're saying nope it's going in why is that important right you're right yeah no it is a, it is a kind of activism that I'm waging against the theories of activism so I mean it's 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 basically what the dominant concept of activism right now is that human actions create change and that's called voluntarism um, but there's other theories. There's theories that says that actually larger economic factors are what create change, is structuralism, or that we have to change our minds in order to change reality, and that's subjectivism. But then I think there's a fourth option, and that is that revolution is the process, is a divine intervention into our lives, into the, into the political sphere. And when you start to think in those terms, it opens up strange and interesting new ways of being an activist, you know? And I think that for, for most Western activists who've been raised on the kind of Marxist, secular, materialist background, they, they reject that. But you know, if you look back at Occupy Wall Street, there were certain acts of God, if you will, that seemed to kind of inspire our movement. For example, a major hurricane came in th right around the time we were organizing, and it, and it actually interrupted one of the organizational sessions that we were having. It, it set this weird mood, you know? There was like a mini stock market crash. There was other weird stuff that inspired people. I'm sure certain people had dreams about the movement that inspired them to come down to Wall Street. There's all this kind of stuff that's unexplainable that, that, that kind of, I think, plays into movements. And so, you know, of course, the best example is Christianity. Christianity conquered because St. Paul and then Constantine had visions of Christ. I mean, so you're, so you're having so, so a social movement that succeeded because someone had a dream? Oh, that's, that's, that's divine intervention.